ideas. Think about it. Your inductive reasoning back does not have the ability to reject an idea. How often have we become totally, totally subjective to an idea or to a group of people without giving it any thought or consideration? It only has the ability to accept and turn over to the treasury of the subconscious mind whatever is offered to it. When your inductive reasoning factor is inoperable, set aside, or not engaged, you are not thinking for yourself. Now, you must follow this book with me. It is vitally, vitally important. If you were in a very positive environment when your conscious mind was in a deductive state, you would automatically become the benefactor of that positive energy that you're surrounded by. It says, however, if your conscious mind was in a deductive state and you were in a negative environment, you would automatically become the benefactor of all the negative energy your senses come into contact with. It says your negative energy comes from many sources, people, papers, television, radio, even loved ones. It passes directly through your conscious mind and causes you to feel or vibrate in a like manner. Think about that. The Poe Hill often talked about the book of negative energy. energy. He talks about, he said, I want you to imagine, he said, that there's an energy constantly flowing to, with, and through you. And he said that this energy is flowing not only with, to, and through you, but also around you. The book of energy. He said that energy is affecting people around you, just as their energy is affecting you and the people around them. And the people around them. A person who is continually in a negative environment and whose consciousness is deduct will very quickly become a product of that environment. What is meant by if their consciousness is deduct? In other words, if your belief system lends itself to persisting no more than a day and you are around people whose consciousness will not persist any more than a day, the chances of you ever changing that persistence and staying in that environment are not very good. Are not very good. Let's go to the next page. The inductive reasoning factor. At the top, your inductive reasoning factor is your thinker. It is referred to in some circles as the critical or analytical factor. This is the part of your personality that actually separates you from all the rest of the animal kingdom, and it gives you dominion over the, your world. Remember something over there in Genesis 126? What did it say? You were given dominion over what? The fowl of the air, the fish of the sea, and everything that creepeth on the earth. Do you think they referred to everything other than your results? Did they mean, Dan, everything but your income? Did they mean everything but your happiness? Did they mean everything but your health? We don't have time to go into the story, but I can tell you a story about health, just as far as my own, uh, my, my own family's concerned about Maureen, who was very, very ill at one time. But she refused to give in to a life-threatening illness. She wouldn't become deductive to the fact that she could not become healthy again. She thought of all the reasons why she could and all the reasons how she was going to. And she would not listen or permit anyone who suggested anything remotely different. Anything remotely different than what she wanted to be, what she wanted to do, where she wanted to go. She wouldn't accept it. She wouldn't accept it. This is the part of your personality that actually separates you from the rest of the animal kingdom and gives you dominion over. Properly developed and applied. Your inductive reasoning factor will turn you on and turn you into an excellent channel for creative energy to flow through. At the present time, presently, you are vibrating in a notion of magnificent thought and energy. We'll be getting into that a lot more tomorrow. But I want you to imagine yourself for a moment, if you could. Just stop and think. Like, just close your eyes for a moment. Go ahead and do that. Just close your eyes. Everyone close their eyes. And just imagine yourself living in this ocean of motion. Just imagine it. Picture it. You see this tremendous, tremendous mind stuff. An intelligence, if you will. Just imagine it. You're plugging into it. Right now you're doing that. 
you're plugging into it, and you are drawing from it right now. As you stop and think, as you can see it, you are actually drawing from it, pulling from it. Do you know that of all the good of this universe, we're poured over each person in this room, the only amount of that good that you can have is yours only by right of your consciousness. The only amount you can have is the amount you're able to understand. You can only have what is yours by right of consciousness. Amen. Let's continue in the book. Merry Christmas, Queen Bee. When these thoughts are brought together, they build creative ideas that can change your old conditioning and literally build your world more beautiful than you previously could have imagined. Let me tell you something that I, I just have absolutely no problem with anymore with regard to taking the number of thoughts. Bob mentioned this morning something about water. Water is energy at a certain state of vibration. Yes, no. In other words, it is two hydrogen atoms and one at a certain state of, think about this, success is energy, a certain group of thoughts that form an idea at a certain state of vibration. Success is nothing more but energy in its most organized state of vibration. Failure, therefore, would be energy, a certain group of thoughts vibrating against natural law, known as confusion. It is energy in its most confused state of vibration. Is that difficult? I don't think so. What is hell? It is an orderly state of vibration. But to achieve it, we must invoke and use our inductive factor, what we're talking about here. So when these thoughts are brought together, they build creative ideas that can change your old conditioning and literally build your world more beautiful than you previously could have imagined. You must, however, you must, however, Properly plant these creative ideas in the treasury of your subconscious mind. The part of your mind that transforms every impression that enters in it into physical form. The word was turned into flesh. Think about that. What is the word? It is the formulation of your thoughts into an idea. That's when it becomes the word transformed into a reality or in the form of a result. I'm asking you to examine that idea. Just examine it. In big black print in your book, I want you to really look at it. Will this idea improve the quality of my life? How many people here, for some time now, have had a great desire on something they want to be, something they want to do, and something they want to have? How many people have actually desired something that you have not yet accomplished. Now, honestly, would you put your hands up? Hold them way up high there. Hold them way up high. Just keep them up there for a minute. Now, let them down, and let me ask you this. With respect to this idea, isn't it true you have had ways on how you can achieve it? Yes, no. Isn't it true that ideas have come to your mind on things that you should do, but you've rejected them because of why? Say it louder. Fear. Fear. Or is it old conditioning? Does the old conditioning tell you why you can't do it? Does it act as a reminder as to what went huh? wrong the last time? No, Isn't it true that the last time someone told you, hey, you shouldn't do this, you failed, so you should listen to the next person again? So we've got to start using not our old conditioning, not being deductive. We've got to start to use what? Inductive reasoning. What is inductive reasoning? Tell me. Is it just thinking or thinking about? Yeah, remember, now we're not talking about just mental gymnastics here. We're talking about working with the power of thought. Thinking is working with the power of thought. I don't know how many people are familiar with a place called Glace Bay, Nova Scotia. Well, that's right. I grew up in Glace Bay, Nova Scotia. It's not the end of the earth, but you can see it from there. And it's a little coal mining town. No, this is a different place here. It's a little coal mining town just out down, down Nova Scotia there. Quite a place. 
And I can remember my dad coming home there every day, every day, every day, and he had this big light on the top of a big hat, big, big hat to protect his head because he worked out under the sea in the coal mine. And he'd have all these old clothes on, and they'd be all dirty and black, and he just looked awful. And he'd come home and home and home and home and home and home. And a lot of people here know my dad pretty well. Uh, he, he used to say, it's all you got to do is work hard. It's all you got to do is be honest. You're going to win. Now, that's only partly true. Hill said in his book, I'm going to have to hurry this up now. Hill pointed out in his book, until he said, we perish such foolish thoughts that working hard and being honest will bring us the desired riches. He said, we'll never change the result until we learn that we must invoke, implement, become aware of. He said, this power of thought, and it's only reached, he said, through the inductive factor or through the ability to think. That's what thinking is. It is working with the power of thought to improve the conditions that you presently have and not allowing yourself to become deductive to all the reasons why it can't. Mm. So let me kind of bring this in for a landing then at the bottom here. If when an idea enters your mind, and it's happening all the time at a fraction of a second, the answer to the above question is yes, then the idea is very likely good for you. Will the ideas that you have held that enter your mind from time to time on how you can achieve a desire. The next time that idea enters your mind and you say, will this idea improve my life? You've got to act on the idea. There's a gentleman I talked to at lunch down here. I hope you're listening. I hope you're listening. Over on page 15, quick exercise. John Canary made reference to page 15 and 16 in your action planner. They're vitally important pages. It's absolutely essential that you answer these questions, go over them, and really think. What we're doing is looking at where we are in our life right now financially. Let me touch on a couple of the questions. In your present position, how much money do you earn? How much have you earned up to this point in your life? If you converted everything